Hello, YouTube. It's Real American Brian, and Johnny's back. Look at that. What up? It's like I know the guy or something. <laughs> it's crazy. But Johnny has uh, some unboxing that he's going to share with us. He got um, a bunch of new books from PGX. So he uh, came on to share them with us. And I'm pretty excited. I don't know what's in it, so it's all going to be a surprise to me. I'm pretty uh, interested to see what you got. Listen, it's free content for the Real American Brian <laughs> YouTube network. Um, you, you, you like launched like crazy. You had 100 subscribers right off the bat. From what I'm, the analytics I'm looking at plateaued since my last visit. Yeah. From the analytics. And, it, <laughs> and it's only been like two weeks. So um, it's definitely time for visit number seven. I think it's seven. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. crazy, pretty yeah. crazy. Yo, Joe, talking comics. Here's your host. It's a real American Brian. So more recently, I decided to experiment with PGX. I watched your video. There's a link. Just kidding. It's not there. Um, <laughs> it'll be at the end. I watched your video and then my wife got me a PGX graded comic for Christmas uh, which was a Homelander. Um, you know, it was a boys comic and that was John Jiang doing it. And so that was my first PGX. And I said, well, getting that and then watching your video saying you might want to give them a try. I started to do my uh, compare and contrast of different ones. So as you've mentioned before, CGC being more of the standard, so to speak, you end up having that ability for resale immediately. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, I may not care. And some of the comics I get graded aren't even worthy of a resale to some people. So once again, who cares? Yeah. And that's, so I, that's, that's where I fall a lot too. Like the, a lot of the books I have graded, most people would be like, why'd you grade that? Like, cause I wanted to, it's, it's for me, it's my collection and I'm not going to be reselling it. So what do I really care? You are looking at what grading service to use. Your video kind of described a, a good amount of that. For me, it was, on average, if you're looking at 24 bucks a book on CGC and 14 on PGX West, turnaround times looked similar. Why not give it a try? And I was shockingly impressed by the turnaround time. I think I sent you the dates, but I think it was 12, 27 or 24. It was right around Christmas. I sent the books to PGX. Today is as of this recording is the eleventh, no tenth, right? Just what's today? Tenth? Uh tenth. Yes. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> We're supposed to be adults, guys <laughs> in the forties. We don't even know what day it is. Jeez. Today's the tenth. They arrived today, so two weeks, which is. And I think this will be a fun unbox because I think uh, as we've talked about already, we kind of have the same similar attitude in that um, these are our collections and it's fun for us. And I think what that does is it actually will be different books that people don't always see graded, you know, because you get it's kind of boring when everyone's specking on the same books and you just yeah. see the same stuff over and over again. Um, you know, where, you sent me that app the other day about grading books and it's cool and all, but like four out of five things I looked for weren't on there. Yeah. So clearly I'm looking for obscure things, which means I just have to do it myself. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So uh, let's get into it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, for sure. I was going to do the same thing. I okay. think we've uh, spent enough time doing the introduction. Let's see what you have. I forgot that you get to call the shots on your show. <laughs> it's, it's hard for me. Um, I got my new glasses, no glare here. So um, I can see up close. I want to make sure the grades are great. If I see an eight, I want to make sure it's not a three. I want to make sure that six is not a nine. I got to make sure the back of it says G.I. Joe, a real oh. American hero. So yeah. that brings up a good point, though, the back of this book. Something that a lot of people don't consider with the modern G.I. Joe books is this giant black cover that you have to make sure is completely flawless. Like any yeah. anyone that knows anything about grading the books knows that black covers are the worst. And all these Joe books have black back covers that you don't even see. Oh, my God. So this is literally, even if you don't, like, you know, touch your face or something, and there's prints is what you're saying. Um, yeah, prints, or if you have the smallest spine tick in the world, it stands out. You can see it from everything. It needs to almost be, I would say, 
untouched and also unlooked at. I don't want to risk, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to risk dirty eyeballs on my books. All right, see what we got here. What, do we do like a reveal? Is that what you usually do? Sure. Like, you know, Whatever you want to do. This is your show right now. No, it's not. All right. So we have a cover I know you like. I do. I love that cover. Yeah. Dawn Helix 289. This was the variant B on this one. Um, when I bought these, by the way, I bought them from an eBay seller who had this whole story arc together, but it was all the B covers. And I was just looking for the books to read. I The fact that he had all the covers I wanted made it even better. And it was like, I mean, it was like maybe five bucks an issue, six bucks. I mean, it was barely anything over so to get the B covers. This one looks pretty nice. Ooh. Oh, nice. Good start. Yeah. Good score there. This is, this is my first experience with the PGX, like getting one. And the case looks a little thinner than CGC. Um, a little bit, I think. It's it's close, but it is a little bit thinner. Close, yeah. And um yeah, it looks good. I like um they got their certified there. They have the what variant it is on there. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Really cool cover. I know one of your favorites. Yeah, it's awesome. Do you have this one? I do. I think it's in my pile to be sent to PGX, actually. Okay, well, good luck beating this. <laughs> Equal it, I should say. All right, next up of the 11. It's kind of cool to see the back first. I have it flipped over, you know. We've got a um, a character some people are a little familiar with, I believe. And this one is Captain America of the uh, Brubaker era. I was just actually talking to you about this. Um, mm -hmm. So a few of these in this batch are from an era that I really enjoyed the stories and I read them in trades and I wanted a cool cover just to have in my collection. So like I wasn't buying these issues. I think this is probably like 2004. Uh, oh, oh, nine later on. Okay. Um, I wasn't buying issues back then, but I was reading the trades as they came out. And so getting a cover I liked and um Getting great as like a display is kind of nice. Just as almost like a, a memento in a way of when you really like some cool stories. And it's, well, if I have a bunch of trades and I have the whole run of Death of Captain America and all that kind of stuff, why would I need to buy a bunch of issues? You buy the issues when you collect them. So if I can get a couple I like, are you looking for it? I don't know. Is that, I thought you were look, looking for yours. And um, so why not just get a cool cover I like? Oh, okay. All right. Mine too. All right. This is what third no 14 years old, February 09. That was 14 years ago, February 09. Crazy. Oh my god. You and I were traveling the country playing board games at a competitive <laughs> level. And it feels like last week. That's crazy. So this corner is pretty nicked up uh bad. Um the I'm actually very okay with that grading. So that is one of the things I will say um, as a possible negative for PGX is that it's really hard to get graders notes. Like you almost have to like beg for any kind of graders notes from them. Yeah. It's kind of a um, CGC gave me some and a few, but yeah, I guess is or, it when it's lower, you you'll, you'll give them and there's no need from, at this point. From CGC. Yeah. It all had to be lower to get anything. And even then it's kind of a crapshoot sometimes, but on the other end of that spectrum, EGS, every single time you get a paper certificate that tells you everything that they found on it. And you have graders notes on every single book, no matter what the grade is. For this one, this is more of just a cool, uh, other people wouldn't bother getting this one graded, but it's a, you know, Bermejo cover that I like and I just, and a cool run. So why not? 9.2. Um, right now we're staying in the nines. Yeah. I like it. Hope that continues. A couple modern books in the nines. Yeah. This one, um, DVD comes out 2007. So you can tell us one a little older. Is it on the left side? On the right side. Okay. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, after I was a big fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the TV show, not the movie, and um, an angel as well. After it went off the air in 2003, and angel was the year after, there was a time when, side note, 
Joss Whedon was um, well regarded, respected, and appreciated, and everything. And things are a little different now for a lot of different reasons. But at the time, it got to the point where I'm at conventions and people are wearing Joss Whedon as my master t shirts at, at cons and stuff, you know. So this was an era where he could do no wrong. Um, and, you know, post Firefly, and he did that show, Dollhouse. And I'm a big fan of the character Faith. So this is the, um, not the first issue. Season eight, issue six, but it's called season eight because it was replacing, it was coming after season seven of the TV show. It doesn't mean season eight of a comic, but um, figured fade spray paint over Buffy. Whoa. Nice. Is that 8.9? Oh no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, but wow, I'll take that. So very cool. Joss Whedon's story, Brian K. Vaughn, um, you know, oh, and, and Joss Whedon did it, but always a cool cover. That was awesome. I think I have a couple Buffy books in this one. So, yeah, really cool. Next, we have the back on this one, Payday. This is, oh, in order. So it's another Buffy-based comic, Angel and Faith on this one. That was a really good likeness of Eliza Dushku there. And this one is, um, they started to get different writers as time went on. This is a different like series so to speak but still you know characters i like and uh, a little bit nicked up okay maybe it was a little bit we'll never uh, know because there's no notes good point cleaner um let's say uh cleaner corners than the other one but it is dark on there that just looks like it was ink smudged um there's a little nick next to that corner, though, coming down a little bit. But uh, overall, it's not bad. I actually would have thought, considering the other one was a 9.8, I thought this could have been actually more if you're basing it off of that um, precedent. You know? What you want, not what you need. <laughs> Can't always get what you want. What you need is graded comics. Clearly, that's a necessity in life. Like... Food, water, DC Unlimited wall art, illuminated, not illuminated, wall art here. Um, let's see what this is. Oh, okay. I love this cover. I'm not even a Superman guy, but um, so this cover, when I saw this Action Comics 1046, um, Lieber Mayo cover, and I usually will get his, you know, Batman and some other characters. This is one of the few Superman ones where I was like, oh my God, I got to get that. It just looks, it's in his style of so realistic, badass. And I picked this one up uh, just a few months ago, actually, just to get this issue. And I uh, I didn't even read it. So I just put it in a media slap. So I don't know, maybe it's good. Maybe it's not. Maybe I'll read it online because I can't get it open now. But I just <laughs> wanted that cover on my shelf. Yeah. And there, no. there you go. So look at that. So the uh, Bromeo variant cover, Action Comics there. That's a really cool cover, though. You know, so this kind of stuff happens on the cardstock covers. It comes up here. Yeah. That's not counted against anybody. No, that's a production issue. So yeah. It'll not... stop it from going higher than a 9.8, but it won't count against you. Yeah. There's a little one in that maybe. Oops see that see that one yep but you know what i'll take it what am i anything but cute the new dodge caliber 100 bullets i recently um gave you some trades on this one to check out um comic from the 2000s brian azarello and um it's a cool comic you get basically you get to exact revenge on people without any repercussion who wouldn't like that concept and then a bigger story behind it. So this one, I just wanted, there was a handful of covers that I thought if I ever come across it, I want to grab, grab and slab. Look at that. I was going to grab it and slab it. Um, I'm not, I wasn't seeking these out per se, but I thought just like the other ones, if it's a story I like and I have a bunch of trades, or in this case, I have the Omnis now. Um, there's two Omnibuses. I figured why not grab a cool looking issue of this one if I can find it. So Hmm, okay. 69? Nope, 96. <laughs> uh, looking at it, 
It is actually a really clean cover for the, the time too. 2006 is when this came out. So the owner of this um, must have kept it in. I mean, he shipped it in like, you know, you could tell it was like a tight bag and board. It wasn't like, you know, opened up too many times. It could have been actually from a store that literally just put it directly in there and it sat in a, a bin for 15 years. Um, very clean. It could have actually been higher. Um, Spidey and Amazing Friends I add on the back of this one. Oh, awesome. Oops, let me grab this the size. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the current Darth Vader series, um, I do like. There are, um, there's three main Darth Vader stories through Marvel. Um, the current one, the one from about five years before, four or five years before that, and the one about six years before that. Um, this is from Greg Pak, and it's uh, now between episode five and six. And um, I do like this run. It's fun. I like the, I enjoy a good, I'd say a, a good amount of Star Wars based comics just in general. What pre Disney canon post whatever just different ones. This one's really cool. I am a big Darth Maul mark, so if I have to pick a cover to send in, this was from my collection when I was getting these issues, and I still am. This is issue what twelve, fifteen. Oh, thanks. They're on twenty nine now, thirty twenty nine or thirty now. But I wanted. I had about five or six covers I had to decide from which one I wanted to send in. Ultimately, I decided on this Lucasfilm style movie poser style and um, a couple of badasses on there. It has been read, so relatively clean though. I think I was careful that day. All right, 9.4. And this is um, from 1021, so still pretty new. Um, but yeah, in my box, read it once. I'm not sure I, well, hold on. I was about to say I don't agree with it. Um, there is, you know, I don't know. I think it's actually pretty good all around. I don't know if you can tell by, by this so much, but. I think it looks really good, real clean too. What do you think, Brian? Could have been more? I don't know. It's hard to say without any kind of graders notes or anything. You don't know what to look for and oh, what they were looking at. I see a thing at the top. I never. I just noticed this. It may not come up. There's a there's a crease that goes like like a right here. Oh, uh, like a finger crease from pulling it out of the bag, maybe. Could have been. Are you saying I I did this? No, I, you or you saying... maybe somebody at PGX even. I don't know. Somebody. <gasps> what <are you> <laughs> Here we got front lines, fuel of war. The war of the future begins today. Pre-ordered. that one. Pre-ordered at GameStop. Hmm. There's blood, language, and violence. That's cool. Oh, what side? Of, right there, right side. Okay. This one. Oh, I saw it. <laughs> I did not know. I've done oh. like eight of these. This All right. So, uh, what? Sorry. Go ahead. I've seen this cover a lot. This is definitely one of those that are out there. It is really? Well, I mean, one that you see, like it just, it holds memory, I guess. Like once you see okay. it, you remember it. That's cool. That I, I didn't realize that. I just knew that um, I'm a big Garth Ennis fan and his run on Punisher in the early 2000s, first the Welcome Home Frank series, and then um, then going to uh, Punisher Max for, or Marvel for, I don't know, um, uh, three years, four years, whatever it was afterwards. Um, they were just awesome. And some of these just amazing covers. Um, so Tim Bradstreet, who is just done, like those covers are just awesome. And they're so realistic. And it's like in an era when, you know, from a movie standpoint, you get Dolph Lundgren in the eighties, right? Was any one of them? Or, yeah. or, was, it, or was it David Hasselhoff? I don't know. There was some, there was something she I, I I forgot now. But then you have the Thomas Jane movie come out, which is okay. But it's like that wasn't Frank Castle. I want to see Frank badass Frank Castle, and that's who this is. So this one is pretty beat up. Um, it is very worn spine. 
it is all four corners are pretty well mashed up here. Um, so when we look at the rating on this one, we end up with an 8.0. It's okay. It looks cool though. It looks cool. Um, I think it was in a $2 box to get. So, I mean, when you grab a comic for two bucks and it's just for sentimental value. Um, yeah, I think it looks really cool. It's a um, kind of like the Captain America one earlier. It's from an, a, a story arc I really enjoyed from artists I enjoy, from writers I enjoy. So let's just get one for the collection. I may seek out a better Punisher comic at some point, um, grading wise, but why not throw this one in? You know. Anyway, yeah, pretty cool. I know like the skull is kind of different now, but I still think it's cool. Next up, we've got, oh, on the back, we've got a uh, an ad for Black Adam, so I'm guessing pretty new here. Yeah, yeah. What's the name of that actor? I always forget. I haven't seen him in anything. <laughs> he's a new right? Yeah, he's, he's a pretty forgettable guy. Yeah. Dwayne Wayne or something? I don't know. I forgot what it is. Um, this is, ooh. Oh, that's another, awesome. Another Bermejo cover here. So this is the Joker, uh, the man who stopped laughing. Um, pretty cool series um, in general, but more importantly for me, I just wanted that cover because I had I had a couple Joker covers, but I really wanted a super evil looking one here. And so I bought this from the same guy who had that Superman one. He seemed to have a lot of these cool uh, Bermejo covers that I wanted. And um, yeah, this just came out um, it recently. Like, oh no, I take it back. This was off the shelf. Never mind. The this was off the shelf at my comic store. It just came out in December. So, oh wow, so that's super fresh. Super fresh. Um, yeah, I remember grabbing this off the shelf because I was digging through, and they'll put some of the like if it's a month old, they'll put this kind of cover in the back, which I appreciate because it lends itself to getting a little messed up by people flipping through too much. So seeing it in the back is almost like feels safer when it's back there. And um, yeah, really cool comic. I'd like to think there's no reason at all. This couldn't be a 9.8. It looks perfect all around. Like it is, Brian, any guesses? Yeah, I have no guesses. Uh, I, it has to be a 9.8. Ooh. No. <laughs> e, e, e point seven? Oh, I'm back. Hold on. Oh no, why? That's that's kind of BS. I'm sorry. Like this this looks really good. That does kind of I'm a little disappointed in that. This looks really good. Is there anything on the back? What? Or... No, that's perfect. Black Adam. Uh, fingerprint. Oh, oh, hold on. There's this. Yeah. See it? Yeah. That, that alone Ooh. wouldn't be enough to knock it down that far, though. I mean, you definitely get knocked for that, but. Do creases on the back count as much as on the front? Yep. Unfortunately. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't agree with that. I mean, it's. I think it looks really good. Um, oh well, it's a cool cover. I'm. It's fine, but it's just not ideal. There. It's the only thing I could see on it. So, yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's one of the examples of why I'm. I'm less concerned about the grade and more of like how cool it looks. Like I, I've been shopping for some like older books that I really want, and as long as the front of it looks cool and I know it's going to look nice in a slab, I really, really don't care. It's going on my shelf. I'll show you yeah. at the end, you know, my some of some of mine on my shelf. But that is great point. It's I'm not like mad. It's just more of a oh right. that's weird. But surprised. Yeah. <laughs> surprised <laughs> and semi-disappointed. Not right. really disappointed, but this is gonna look awesome on a shelf because it looks awesome. 
Yeah, I mean, as soon as you pulled it out, I was like, dang, that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so that might still be, if you're watching this, that might still be at your local comic store right now on, you know, on the current shelf. Two more to go. Um, something a bit uh, newer, because I see the Batman promo on here for the movie. Um, this is a pretty fun Harley Quinn uh, cover is this the TV show or the, yeah. So this is the series that took place after season one of the HBO show with Harley, um, Ivy and their adventures. Um, you know, friends or more than friends. I'll let you decide. I'll let you, uh, I mean, that's what, kind, yeah. of variant, what kind of variant cover does it say there? So this is the Chew variant cover, okay. uh, artist last name. So, um, that is Derek Chu. Um, yeah, I wanted, so I was getting these anyway, just the actual comics, but just getting whatever the standard issue was. And then I saw this variant out there and I'm like, you know, I really would like, cause the, the animated series is so fun. I really would like a version of her on the shelf. And so while I got some really cool looking Harley books, but I didn't have any cartoon ones. So for me, it was great to get this one. Uh, very new still, uh, April last year. So definitely accessible to get. Issue number six, I believe it was only six total. You can get the trade if you want. I think it's probably out now. So cool comic. And it is a great score. Should I make a face for your thumbnail? <laughs> sure. Last time you grabbed one and my mouth was open, I'm like, that's what we're using? Okay. Yeah, it what works. Like? Make sure you put a um, hundred things Johnny P hates about everything in the world. Put that on there. <laughs> we're going to get them. Um, no, really cool cover though. Um, clean, all corners. Um, no crease. These marks on here are from the, they're actually like, um, is it from when they break the slabs apart? Maybe it's like plastic. It looks like. Yeah, possibly, I don't know. Not anything on the tell there. Yeah, it's not anything on the comic, but looks really good there, clean everywhere. So yeah, really cool. There's one left, and it has to be GI Joe because I had two of them in there. Um, and it's it's almost like I didn't honestly save it for last. I literally just opened it up, dropped it out. But <laughs> it's gonna look like I planned this, and I swear I did not. I have no idea why the, the comics were bookended with G.I. Joe on front and back. Because that's how I, you know, because I put them in, my order was like, you know, properties were next to each other. So I don't know why, but it happened. And it is this one where the back, oh, 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 I didn't see anything. The back looks pretty cool. All right. So let's uh, let's go through them one by one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, you guys got some time, uh, Brian. Who is um, who's that guy? Uh, that's Quinn, isn't it? It's hard to tell. That's small, but I think that's Quinn. It is Quinn? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can tell by the hair. He got that kind of Frankenstein hair on the necklace. Why is he on the Cobra side? Uh, he was more. Person. He was, he was a mercenary. Actually, like, he was a mercenary, but he did good things. You know. Yeah um pretty cool dreadnoughts there this is to your point on our 300 um episode that letting this be in a slab allows us to enjoy both sides yeah because i mean if you had a backer board you wouldn't be able to see the back at all right i haven't done anything with my other copy yet so it's kind of cool i've got this one uh front side let's uh stream or brian let's go through them all <laughs> i'm all right there's a lot there. Flint, shipwreck. I'm I'm doing them. Um, Alpine. Um, the big bazooka. I like. I think Jamie did a great job with that. Yeah, uh, Dusty, who I own on the shelf. Oh, let's get uh, real quick here. Let's. Um, we don't own people. I do. <laughs> it's literally, it's literally up there. Literally, literally. Um, where is? Darklon on the um on the Cobra one. I can't see. He's there somewhere. Um it is why is there Pentor in the like sort of in the back? 
He's not top billing. I think there was a order that he put them in, like from the. I think he mentioned it in some podcast where there was an order of release, and that went from one side of the stadium to the other, maybe. Mm. Oh, there's a, there's Joe's on this side. Is that because it spilled over? Maybe. Is that Ricondo here? Yeah, it looks like him. Yep. Bob Mindbender? Huh. Weird. I'm guessing there were just more characters. Wait. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, man. Do I have to return it if I can't find him? Yep. I think he gave me a slip that showed me exactly where he was. And, uh, you know, stay tuned for an up. Oh, here we go. There. There he is. Yeah. Cool mask, cool shirt, cool pants, and 9.8 rating. Perfect. Wrap around cover. Yeah. Look at that. Which way is the front? Doesn't matter. You know what? <laughs> Odd number of days, that's the front. Even that's the front. I'm going to flip it every day. Um, wrap around cover. Last issue. I wish I could do the people's eyebrow right now. Last issue. <laughs> Yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> uh, Jamie Sullivan cover. Um, some guy named Larry wrote this. And yeah, real American hero for real American Brian. It's beautiful. Yeah. So pretty fun. I'll take I'll give you a quick peek inside this, um, this little closet here. What's going on there? There's just a few things on display there. I got to rework it, but um, some slabs in there. And um, there's the one from you in there. Probably can't see that. But I, uh, it was an easy way to just display. I might do a better, something better down the road, but it worked for me. But yeah, that was pretty fun. Um, I would say overall of my 11 books I had PGX do, I am overall happy. I think the turnaround time was amazing. I think the pricing was very fair. Shipping was very fair. Um, I think I got a an amazingly unfair great grade on that Buffy comic being a 9.8. But I think the Joker one was a little less than I had hoped for. Um, all the rest, maybe Vader could have been a 9.6, but all the rest could have been pretty accurate, or I would say I'm pretty happy with. So, Yeah. Right on. Well, I appreciate you sharing them with us. And any time that you want to do another unboxing, we're here for it. You've been watching a Real American Brian production in association with the letters G, I, and J-O-E.